The bear man, the one who had kidnapped the little goddess, had been working on his project all day. A mountain of bulbs and transistors and maybe a mile of wire lay in the bed of his truck. He still had a lot of work to do. His hand slipped and made contact with a live wire. He recoiled instinctively, but thrilled at the shock. It was an awesome force, the sting of power harnessed. He held the wire again, felt the current in his muscles exiting through the hairs. The cabin sat in a dale beneath the road, hidden by trees. Now it was wrapped in yards and yards of wire, high wattage bulbs dangling from the walls like perverse Christmas lights. If it were ever needed, his cabin would explode in a festival of light. He imagined the heat, the electricity buzzing, but no fire. In his mind, it was beautiful. Sweat dripped into his eyes. Time for a break. He sat on the porch steps and lit a cigarette. Something rustled at the tree line, and a nimble doe emerged from the woods, her eyes shimmering in the diffuse overcast light. He scuffed the leaves on the porch to scare her away, but she didn't startle. She walked steadily toward him, more daring than any deer he'd ever seen. He thought for a moment she might be rabid, but then he saw her eyes. They were large and white, like a human's, and seemed to smile at him. She stopped a foot from the porch and stared at the bear man, who stretched out his arm and patted her stiff fur. She was hot to the touch, like she had a fever. Well, he said, what? The doe scampered to the tree line then turned and waited for him to follow. Shit, he muttered, and snuffed his cigarette on the porch. He double-checked to make sure the annex, the little goddess's temporary home, was locked. When he was halfway across the dale, the doe straightened, then leapt into the woods, bounding ahead of him. The bear man gritted his teeth and pursued, branches flying into his face, thorns tearing his jeans. They were headed downhill toward what the bear man knew was a forest route. He did his best not to trip. Finally, they came to the road, and the bear man halted. The doe stood in the midst of the pavement, staring at him. Suddenly, there was a flash of light and a horn. Smack! A semi loaded with timber plowed across the road on its way down the mountain. The doe rocketed into the air, somersaulted twice, then fell to the ground with a thud. The truck didn't stop. The bear man crouched over the body. Steam rose from the open wounds where hot blood met the cold air. The bear man smiled looked into the doe's dead eyes. Burst entrails lay all around him. He touched one and winced. Heat settled under his skin, the beginnings of a blister. And then he realized where he was. It was just a little further into the woods, a clearing he had been to many, many times. He left the doe's remains for a moment and followed the faint path through the foliage. Sure enough, there it was. At the edge of the clearing, at the base of a huge redwood was a barren section of dirt. It was his mother's grave. The bear man stood where he figured her feet would be, crossed his arms and sighed. It's almost time, Mama, he said. Three more days. He knelt and spread his palm over the soil. I'll make you proud, he whispered. With the protection of the sole of his shoe, he pushed away as much of the doe's guts as he could and hoisted the corpse over his shoulder, careful to avoid any open wounds. Skin to skin, she was hot, but not searing. He trekked up the mountain with the carcass. He wasn't worried about flies. The heat would repel them. In a little while, she would be cool enough to skin and add to his collection. <laughs>